Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn easy-to-implement tips on how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award-winning professional organizer and coach, Julie also shares suggestions to help you live clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Are you overwhelmed by clutter? Do you feel stuck in life? Are you ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Individual coaching and our unique clutter-free living mastermind support people in becoming free, moving forward, and achieving success. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Sometimes clutter can be found in unconscious beliefs, but how would you know that? We're going to talk today with an expert who's going to help us, and we're going to use yours truly as a guinea pig, get rid of some unconscious beliefs. Kimberly Lovell is a transpersonal psychotherapist, intuitive healer, transformational coach, spiritual teacher, and holistic business mentor. She works with clients worldwide, helping them to clear their unconscious beliefs and blocks and inspiring and empowering them to live the life of their dreams. An ambassador for the divine feminine, she empowers you to embrace and align with your soul's journey, gifts, and magic so you can live a life of purpose, passion, and prosperity as you shine and share your gifts with the world. She is an expert in helping people rapidly shift their unconscious beliefs and transform all areas of life. Welcome Kimberly. You're welcome. Thank you for the invitation. So how do we get unconscious beliefs? How do they get trapped in there? Mm. Uh, this is a question that everybody's asking because we all have unconscious beliefs and essentially they come from various places. So we have beliefs that are held on, on what I call the core level, which are beliefs from our childhood. We pick these up from our parents, from the people that are around us and that look after us, from the teachers. Up until the age of about seven, we are like little psychic sponges. So everything is going in and um, we're taking everything on. It goes into our unconscious mind. So if you imagine your mind, the top, um, if you imagine like a little triangle, imagine the iceberg. The top part of that um, triangle, the little bit that's above the surface, is the conscious mind and that's just 5%. Underneath the water, the iceberg, is the massive 95%, and that's the unconscious. So it's all going into our unconscious mind. It comes from our caregivers, it comes up to the age of about seven, when all of our beliefs are, are kind of pretty much formed by that age, which is quite shocking, really. And um, also we have beliefs that are on the ancestral level, so they're handed down either through the genetics or in a morphogenetic field. They're coming from, you know, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents. They say it goes back seven generations, but I think sometimes more. So we've got ancestral beliefs. We've also got collective unconscious. So we're constantly bombarded with information. Uh, we have society programming us. We've got a collective unconscious, and everything goes into that. And um, so there are beliefs that we're handed down, religious beliefs, all that kind of thing. So it's, you know, we're bombarded, literally, and these beliefs go in to the unconscious, and then we're kind of like, well, we, you know, we're saying that we want one thing, and then we're not experiencing it. It's because we've got these unconscious beliefs that are in conflict with what we say we want. Can you share with us how these unconscious beliefs can create clutter? And, you know, in this show I talk about physical, yeah. mental, emotional, yeah, and spiritual yeah. because there are all those aspects of clutter. Mm. Yeah, so it's all connected essentially, you know, whether we're talking about physical clutter or mental emotional clutter, it's all the same thing. And um, really these, these beliefs, what we want to do is to identify what the beliefs are and to transform them, okay? So how you find out if you've got um, clutter, well, if we're talking about physical clutter, I'm sure you've spoken lots about it. we can just look around and we can see that. In terms of the mental clutter, it might be that you've got a lot going on in your mind, it might be that you've got anxiety or you're stressed, that's a good sign that there's you know mental clutter going on. But the other thing is we all have this 
like these unconscious beliefs and I, I see those really as being clutter. It's whatever's getting in our way, whatever's kind of stopping us from reaching our goals, from living our dreams, that is clutter. It's things that we no longer need and often they've served a purpose at some point in our lives, you know. So we're always gaining from, from everything, we're always learning and, and growing. Sometimes it's a case, you know, like you clear out your physical clutter, we need to clear out our mental clutter and get rid of some of these limiting beliefs or old beliefs that are no longer serving us. So, um, you know, if you're wanting something in life, whether it's to quit smoking, um, lose weight, I don't know, make a certain amount of money, create your own business, whatever it is that you're wanting, if you're not moving forward with your dreams and your goals and you're not seeing results, then there's some resistance or unconscious clutter that's going on on the, on the um, it's not just the mental level because we hold energy and we hold memories and experiences, but it's in our unconscious mind. So that's a clutter that we're going to be digging into and kind of finding out a bit more about today, yeah. Oh, and we're going to go through me. As I said, I'm the guinea pig earlier, but how very do we... Very brave. <laughs> very brave. You know what? I usually try to put it all out there because the larger point of that is, you yeah. know, I do this for a living, but I still have my own stuff. I'm constantly a work in progress. I'm constantly evolving, and I want to show people that. You know, it. You, it's a continual process. It's not like we're going to go from A to B and finish. It's always about making yourself the best human being you can be. But how do we uncover... You know, we might be tooling along or we might do work, you know, have someone come in and help us, but how do we find out about those unconscious beliefs? Because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that are working on improving themselves but have no idea about this. Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, on my website, I have got a list of beliefs, um, the most common beliefs. So we've got all kinds of beliefs. There's thousands and thousands of different beliefs that we can have. But when we're working, what we want to clear is the bottom belief because these beliefs are stacked one on top of the other. So we could go on and on clearing different beliefs, and, and we've got many. So it, it's kind of like going, if you think about it, it's like going into your unconscious mind. It's like going into a library. So where are we going to start? So first of all, you want to focus on the area of your life that's not working or the area that you want to change. Okay, and you're perfectly right. We've, you know, it's all an ongoing process. So we're all human beings. We've all got this unconscious clutter, um, and and some of the unconscious beliefs serve us, obviously. So it's just important. We to pull out the things that don't serve us and focus on what does serve us. So um, let's say, for example, um, I should say, what was what I just got a little my notes here referring to what you'd asked about. Because I know we're going to get into this a bit more later. But for example, one of the areas that you wanted to look at was um, business. So some of the really common beliefs limiting beliefs that people have around their business that block their business are beliefs in that they're not good enough. Um, they have a belief um, that they're a failure, they have a belief that nothing they do works or they're not allowed to achieve success, they're not allowed to um, make much money, yeah. Money is a good one, it's always a hot topic, really juicy to get into and money is our biggest teacher, you know, so um, money is neutral but we put all of our projected beliefs onto money, so you know, we end up with beliefs like money is evil, it's, you know, money is dirty, um, that, that money makes you arrogant or, or that rich people are dot 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 fill in those blanks because if we have beliefs about rich people then when and they're negative beliefs then we're never going to have money because we don't want to be like them right so that's right. kind of like one area and, and one example just some beliefs we can have all kinds of beliefs and they show up in our business in terms of um, not getting sales not attracting clients all areas because everything in life that we do is based upon our energy. It's all a reflection of what's going on within us. So to find out the, the blocks that you've got and the beliefs, then look, in, look at your life, see what's not working. And so if you've got an issue with money or you've got an issue with weight or with clutter, then you want to look at what beliefs have I got about clutter or about my, my home or what beliefs have I got about my business or about money or about having clients, yeah? You can. Um, I've got a list of beliefs on the website you can look through, but obviously I haven't got them all down there. When I'm working one-to-one -one with people, what I do is I actually am clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient. So I tune in and I actually pick up and, and speak with their unconscious mind and get the beliefs that are running that aren't serving. Yeah? But you can learn to do this yourself. So I teach people how to do it. But, um, you know, we, we all know if we've got an area of our life that consistently we're kind of having issues with, 
that's kind of a good clue that we've got some stuff running there, yeah? And, and these beliefs, they're kind of like programs. So you know when you get a bug in your computer? <laughs> or we got the gremlins with the technology. It's kind of like having little gremlins in there. And so, you know, you're doing all the right things, you know? You think you've got this plan and you're following it and it should be happening and yet it's not working. And it's because, you know, on, an, on some level, and it's unconscious, we ourselves are blocking it. You can call it resistance, you can call it sabotage, you know. But energetically, we're pushing it away. We're not vibrationally aligned with it because our energies and our beliefs are not aligned with what it is that we're wanting. Yeah? Outstanding. Now, what, how do we release it? So if we felt, okay, I believe I'm not good enough, for example, yeah. how would and I don't know, I know we're going to go probably through an exercise and maybe this is how you yeah. help people release yeah. it, but, you know, yeah. I've heard it like EFT, are there different ways that people can release it? Sure. So, um, what I use, the quickest way, I've used many different healing modalities over the years and taught them as well. Um, the quickest tool that I found is um, really coming back to my roots. I'm working with my intuition, but you can learn to do this. You can learn to actually dig for the beliefs, and I use theta healing. So, I'm using the theta brainwave to access the unconscious. Both, you can do this for yourself, access your own unconscious mind, but also as a practitioner, access your client's unconscious mind. Yeah. So the thing is that when we're in a theta brain, where we're much more connected with our unconscious mind, we're also more connected with our creativity, with the universe, and and the um, super conscious, if you like. So we can tap into all kinds of possibilities and all kinds of solutions that we don't access in our everyday. Um, state, waking state, yeah? Excellent. Now, I, I'm just curious, and maybe this is a better question after we go through an exercise mm. with me, but I've found sometimes people will find out something about themselves and use it as a crutch. For example, well, you know what, I can't keep my home clutter-free because I have an unconscious belief. Do you, do you understand <laughs> what I'm asking? And it can take something and turn it around that way and still stay stuck. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, you know, some people don't want to change, so that's fine. And here's the reason, you know, often people come to me and they say they want to change. The truth is, you know, we all consciously think we want to change and we want whatever it is we want, okay? But on an unconscious level, we don't because whatever it is we're currently experiencing, either we're learning from it or it's serving us in some way. So often the people, I mean, this is probably like another question later on, but the reason people hold on to stuff is because it keeps them safe. You know, you've all heard about the comfort zone, and you know, 90% of what we actually want, our dreams and, and our ambitions, they're outside of our comfort zone. As human beings, we want to be safe, so we keep doing the things that are familiar to us. We don't want to kind of feel scared, so we're not going to do something different or challenging. And, and every time we're coming up against these beliefs, this is another way to find out. If we're feeling fear, often that's because there's an unconscious belief that's going, hang on a minute, shouldn't be doing that, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't spend that much money or, you know, no, you can't do that because people will think, fill in the blank, yeah? Uh, yeah, I'm having some aha moments. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots, yeah, lots of aha. You can't see my face the entire time, but they're there. <laughs> uh, I can see your face. <laughs> okay, good. I didn't know if all the expressions were, were <laughs> the camera's not always tuned to me, so if people are watching. Uh -huh. my yeah. Eyes. So, yeah, I mean, if... If um, you know, if you're alive, you're going to have some unconscious beliefs, and um, you're going to have some challenges. And the other thing is, people often think, "Oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good with money. I'm doing okay." Often, we have a dual belief. Some of the things when people come to me and we get to the bottom beliefs, they're absolutely um, dumbstruck, really, in terms of this belief, because they're thinking, "Well, I don't think that. I think this," and they think the opposite. But we can have a belief that we're rich, we can also have the belief that we're poor. It may be our ancestors that we're poor and it was held on that level, or it may be a past life that's there's some, you know, aspect that it's still running. So although we're in, in this life we should realise that we're rich and we've got money in the bank and all that kind of stuff, we're still running this belief that we're poor. And therefore our behaviours aren't aligned with somebody who's rich or somebody, you know, who's who's um successful business person because we're still running this belief. And that the beliefs that we run are going to impact our behaviour. So they drive us, you know, That's in terms of how we are, how we what we feel, and, and what we think, and then also, you know, how we behave and, and act. That's an excellent point. I went to college with a woman who was extremely wealthy, and her father used to make his wife 
go to three different grocery stores and cut coupons. And I mean, they had <laughs> enough money for, I mean, it wasn't, several generations didn't need to worry. But now that you're saying that, now I understand why that was. Because I remember in college thinking, well, gosh, that's bizarre. And you could actually pay someone to go get your groceries. You don't need to send your wife to do that and then cut coupons. So uh -huh. I, now I understand. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really interesting because, you know, I do a lot of work with people around money. Um, and, and um, well, all beliefs. It's kind of, they're crazy beliefs. And when we discover them, we're like, oh, that's crazy. You know, that's crazy. Why would I have that belief? And um, this is what happens all the time. You know, this, this last week I've worked with several people, actually. And sometimes it goes in kind of spades. But I've worked with people this week that have got money. Um, where often it's people who don't have money or they're trying to make more money. I've worked with uh, a couple of women this week, at least, who have had money and they've had quite a lot of money. Um, a couple of people, um, yeah, in fact, well, yeah, both of them in a sense. One had inherited money um, and there was a lot of shame around it. It was really interesting. So when we actually traced it back, there was shame coming from the ancestors and in the family tree, you know. So, and, and there was all, often it's like there's some stuff on an ancestral level, there's some bits from past life that are there, and there's also some childhood conditioning, you know, so it's kind of like an intricate web that we've woven, <laughs> and this link, you know, this kind of um, unconscious belief is kind of stuck in there, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's like hooked, and we just need to untangle it and kind of pull all the threads. Fantastic. Well, let's try to pull some threads or yeah. untangle me a little okay. bit, so people know, I sent Kimberly very... Yeah general I didn't give her a lot of you know not my personal beliefs I completely believe in intuitive counselors like Kimberly I'm a fan yeah. of it it's a people like Kimberly are a tool that can assist you I also believe we have all the answers inside but working with someone like this can help tease mm -hmm. out or, or show you things so again they're very general I have no idea what she's gonna say so let's get started <laughs> okay so um yeah, so one of the things that you'd asked me about was business, okay, and I think this is great because it's good for everybody. So business has been slow as I change what I'm doing, whatever blocks around creating abundance, so who doesn't want more abundance, right? And if not, why not? <laughs> because even when we're, we think that we're abundant, why wouldn't you want more? Yeah? Sometimes, mm -hmm. here's another way to find out if you've got a block. If, you've, and if you're feeling triggered by anything that we're saying, and if I'm saying to you, you know, who wouldn't want more, and you're going, I've got enough, thank you, I don't need more, it's not all about money, <laughs> whatever you've got running, you know, just check that one out, because there's a good flag there that you've got a belief that's running. So, um, so yeah, um, some beliefs that I've, that I've got, and these are kind of not necessarily yours, Julie, but I kind of just, I've shared a couple of them earlier, but just test. So I'm going to teach you very quickly... Um, how to muscle test, if you don't know already. Do you know? I do, but can okay. we explain for people who might not? Yeah, I do, I've got, again, I've got a video on my website that goes through this because we're going to do this super quick here today. So if you take um, a finger and a thumb and then to create a circle and then interlock both of those hands, so you've got two interlocked circles. So um, this is applied kinesiology and we use it for muscle testing. So you're going to say, my name is Julie, and then you're going to pull your fingers my name is Julie. You try and pull them apart, and if it's a true response or a yes, they hold, yeah? So they don't come unlocked. Yep, yep, they're... Perfect. they're Good. They're quick, Another quick, thing quick. you can do is you can just say yes, 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 and no, no, no. Yeah? No, no. Ah, oh, when I did the no, it... Yeah. Perfect. You can, you can also do this standing up. You can use your body as a pendulum, and you can sway forwards for yes and backwards for no. Some people find that easier than the fingers. Several different ways, but anyway... We, you've got a yes and no, so that's fab. We always want to check that. So here's the thing. It's it's really good because you can actually see, your body's going to actually tell you what you're holding on the unconscious level, okay? Okay. So um, test the belief I'm good enough. I'm good enough. Fairly strong on that one. Okay. And just check I'm good enough on all four levels. I'm good enough on all, not quite. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So okay. I'm good enough on four levels. Okay. I'm good enough on the ancestral level. I'm good enough on the, nope, ancestral level, like that, yeah. slip. Okay, and I'm good enough on the history level? I'm good enough on the history level. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's good. Okay, so we've got soul level, core level, genetic level, or history level, and, um, yeah, ancestral. genetic or ancestral, like, I call them, they're both, some are handed down in the genes, but they're, they're both really from the ancestors, anyway, whichever way they come in. Cool, so it's just, his, it's uh, not history level, it's ancestral level. 
yes. where it's hard with you. So that seems like that's the only one. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into Zeta and I'm going to command that all of your ancestors know what it feels like to know that they are good enough, that they're worthy and they're deserving. Okay, so we're going to restore their goodness, all right? So this is kind of like, you know, often people who've got any kind of self-esteem issues, confidence issues, they all have this kind of belief, and it's quite a bottom belief, because essentially we're all good, all right? So um, I'm just going to uh, make that command, so I just go into the turn a command that your ancestors will um, see themselves from, let's just say they'll see themselves from creator's perspective, this is really good, so part of what I do with Theta is actually download the feeling, because we also want to change the cellular memory, okay, so when we're doing this work, we can change this not just for you, but also for your ancestors and for your children, if you've got children, so it's really amazing what actually shifts when we do this work for ourselves, and also, as well as doing it for our family, we're also doing it for the planet, because we're actually raising the vibration of, of ourselves and therefore as we each raise our vibration, we're collectively raising the vibration of the planet. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. You're welcome, you're welcome. Because it's just so much needed at this time. So I'm just seeing this energy going to your ancestors so that they know what it feels like to be to be worthy and to be deserving, to be good enough. Um and the truth is we're more than good enough, right? We're all amazing individuals, yeah? So let's just have them be able to see themselves in that way. And that you, again, we all do this. We're always looking at what's wrong with us rather than what's right with us, yeah? What if there's nothing wrong with you, yeah? Right, absolutely. And you know, the reason that why I do this show is because when we clear the clutter from our lives, we can share our gifts with the world, and then we exactly. all raise our vibration. And then what an amazing world we would do, would mm -hmm. live in if we were all doing what brought us joy. Think about yeah. that. It's, it's really easy for us to look to the world and see all the problems in the world. You know, we can look and we see there's a lot of um, anger and there's a lot of um, war and a lot of poverty and so forth. But how how do we keep ourselves poor? And where do we not actually access and realize all the richness that we have around us and within us? Where do we live in, in internal conflict? Because we can't have peace in the world out there if we haven't got peace within us. Yeah. So collectively, it's our responsibility to be the change and to create that peace that we want to see. And, and the world is just a mirror, it's just a reflection, you know, so so never mind about what's happening out there, clear it up inside of ourselves and then we'll see it manifesting in the world, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, we are, we are so powerful. <laughs> okay, so um, another one that I wanted you to test was um, I'm a success. Okay, so, okay, let's see, I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm a success, that's, that's okay. Good, okay, so it's test I'm a success on all four levels. Nope. <laughs> <Pretty> so, <clear. laughs> okay, so um, just test uh, I'm a success on the history level. That's okay. I'm a success on the ancestral level. Nope. Oh, okay, so it sounds like your ancestors are needing some work today, huh? I think some, some the ancestors need some, yeah, some cleansing and to, to go off in the ethers and, you know, let it yeah. go. Yeah, okay. So let's just ask then that the ancestors can know what it feels like to be a success and pull the belief. So, you know, it's a little bit like hypnosis, only much, much quicker. We pull the belief that I'm not worthy or I'm, or I'm a failure and we replace it with I'm good enough and I'm, and I'm worthy and I'm a success, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to go back to the other belief that we asked you about, which was um, I'm good enough. So just test that one again and just see what's happening with that one. That's working. I'm good enough um, on the ancestral level. Oh, it's it's strong now. Yeah, so it's changed. Fantastic. And so just test um, I'm a success on the ancestral level. It's changed. Fab. Perfect. So it's kind of like instant, yeah? Yes. Sometimes what takes time is finding the actual belief, the bottom belief, but I kind of tuned in before we kind of came on to see just from what you'd said to me about, you know, there's two lines really, what you want to work on. All right, so um, test for me, nothing I do works. Oh, okay, nothing I do work. Oh, that, phew. No. Wow, nothing that was right off. Okay, here's the thing as well. When we use a negative, the unconscious mind is a bit funny around negatives. Okay, so it kind of doesn't really understand them. Some people will, they'll test... Um, properly with a negative in it. Some people won't and, and yeah, so let's just test um, everything I do works. Everything I do works. It works. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. And everything I do works on the ancestral level? Everything I do. No. 
Okay. So I'm just going to change that one and um, I'll, I'll do this one as we're doing this because I want everyone to have the benefit. So would you all like to know um, how to have everything you do works? Yes. I'm sure they would, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask then that um, that we pull the belief nothing I do works or I'm hopeless, I'm a failure. Any of those beliefs that we've been working on um, not being good enough, I'm just going to ask create a download there for everybody so that we can pull those up limiting beliefs and download and that you also have not only the belief but that you know what it feels like to be good enough to be a success and that everything that you do works. So I'm going to resolve it all on the history level for anybody who's got it on the history level and clear it on all the other levels and download for you that you already know what it feels like to have everything you do work. Yeah? Mm -hmm. a, bit, a little bit of the Midas touch. <laughs> Because often people talk about that, don't they? Like, I'm not lucky, or they, they talk about people being lucky. It's not really about being lucky, but it's very much about, you know, having the right beliefs within us, in our unconscious, and then following through on them, being aligned and taking those actions, yeah? And um, we take those actions when we don't have other beliefs that are contradicting that. <laughs> okay, so test for me, um, my business is slow. My business is slow. That's not bad. It's working, so to speak. Is that yes? Yeah, so yes. Okay, so tell me, because here's another thing you can do to clear them. If you're doing this yourself, because you can do, I mean, you, you learn the tips, so you can do it all yourself, okay? Sometimes we still need a bit of support, or um, the thing is, when we're working on our own stuff, even for myself, um, and I do lots of this, I'm always finding the beliefs in myself. <laughs> and, um, and, and also, I have my own facilitation as well, because we've all got our blind spots, you know? It's kind of like these little blinkers on. So, um, but yeah, so... Tell me, this is a good way to find out. We call it digging. So how does it serve you to have your business be slow? So do you want me to do the muscle testing on that? No, just tell me what comes out when we talk about it. doesn't serve me at all. Well, it must do in some way. When I share my gifts with the world, that allows others to share theirs. Uh-huh. So if it was serving you in some way, what would, what would it, if it's doing you a favor, being slow, how would, how would it be doing you a favor? Well, I'm kind of laughing as you say this and having the aha moments, yeah. you know, talk about listening to your intuition. Yeah. The past couple months have been slow, but I, I redid my website, which mm -hmm. was huge. I launched this podcast, which there, it's a video, it's a podcast. There are several steps into it. And my guidance yeah. was let it slow down, let it get it done, do something <laughs> the reflection. So yeah. I probably miswrote and said, okay, I have anxiety about the future or fear that it'll always stay like this. So I probably miswrote that, but but it allowed me to do those things, which I'm yeah. grateful for. I love that. I'm, try I'm sorry about this. It was wobbling a bit. <laughs> um, so a couple of things that I just want to flag up for people because be careful what you ask for. Yeah? Oft our prayers are always answered, just not always in the way that we expect them to be. So be mindful about what you're asking for because, yeah, if you say, you know, I can't cope with this or I need to slow down or this is a bit too much, the universe will hear you and it will, will slow things down. It's not a bad thing. You know, we get so used to being busy and doing, doing, doing. You know, a lot of um, entrepreneurs I see kind of like in that little hamster wheel thing, you know. Get into having a business so you can be free and have more time and then you get stuck on having to do everything and working really hard. So, um, and, and often that comes from having that belief, I have to work hard for money, right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, you know, not only do we need to get out of the job and, and start our own business, we can make a bit more, right? But we can make a lot more um, if we clear that belief that we have to work hard to, to create money. So, yeah, so what you're saying then, Julie, is that actually you asked, asked for some space so that you could do all these things. And, you know, business is kind of like um, peaks and trough. There's a certain amount of flow to it, yeah? Um, and, and so... Um, Sometimes, if our energy, if we're not feeling 100% energy-wise or health-wise, what will happen is clients will, will drop off or it will go slow. And then when we're feeling a bit better, it comes back because guess what, people? Our energy is what's, you know, our business is us. It's our energy. And so if our energy is a bit bleh, then that's what happens in, in the business. Or if we've got lots of things on the go, we can't be completely focused on one thing because our energy is scattered. And so that's going to impact the results in our business, you know. So, yeah. so yeah. And so, what if you could actually be okay with the flow of your business and know that 
that you can succeed, that you are a success and that your business is succeeding, that it's growing in the highest and the best way for you. Would that be good? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So can we download for you then that you already know how to see every step you make as progress? Yeah, please. Yeah. Download, implant, whatever you do. Yeah. Okay, and we'll do this for everybody as well. If you want it, you just mentally say yes and you can have it, okay? And energy knows no boundaries in terms of time and space. So whether you're listening live or you're listening to it later on, it's fine. Okay, so yeah, because the, here's the other thing. I was, I was waiting to ask kind of what the download is because for different people it will be different downloads even though they've got the same issue, but this is for you and, and I think this is good for everybody as well. Success breeds success. So if we actually start acknowledging each step forward as progress, then we start going, oh, I'm successful, I've made progress, that's good. And then that leads to more, oh, I'm successful, I've made progress. Yeah? So, um, yeah, this is a good one. I have a bit more of this for myself as well. <laughs> so, yeah, let's just download that. We all know how to move forward in our lives and in our business, recognizing every step we take and seeing the progress, seeing everything that we've achieved and how far we've come. And let's just download that we can do that because often people say, don't they, oh, you know, when you've gone a certain way, then you can look back. But if we can do it every step of the way, then we always feel good about what we're achieving and how our life's going and how our business is going because we're actually recognizing that success in each moment. So let's just download that for everyone on all four levels and that you already know what it feels like to have this contentment and this peace. Okay, any anxiety about progress or not progressing fast enough and teach you that you can progress as fast as you want to or as slow as you want to in the highest and the best way possible for you. So if you need to go slow right now, that's okay. You might have some good reasons why you need to go slow, as in health or whatever. And um, yeah, if, if you're recognizing that you, you, or you feel like your business is going slow, then look at, well, why is it? How is it serving me? Because something's either always serving us on some level or we're learning something from it. So maybe, you know, you've asked... To, to slow down and so that's what's happening yeah just simply by asking you've actually created that and so what does it give you when you slow down it gives you time it gives you space to be able to create and to you know get all the, all the foundations in place and to be able to go at the right pace for you yeah so initially you said oh it's not serving me and that's usually people's reaction no it's not serving me but if it, what I say well if it was serving you how would it be serving you yeah and, and you always look at kind of what has it created and what's the What's the positive from it? What do you learn from it? What do you gain by it? You know, often we look at people, you know, if they're sick, how does sickness uh, serve us? Well, sometimes we get attention for being sick or we look after ourselves more when we're sick, you know? So if we can actually learn, that's the lesson. And if we actually learn how to do that, then we don't need to be sick in order to have the attention or look after ourselves. Yeah, we won't need to slow down. If we already, if we outsourced, for example, then we don't need to slow down because we get somebody else doing the website and doing those bits. Do you know what I mean? So there's there's many solutions and every situation is unique. But um, it's really good to, I think these downloads are good for everybody. Um, here's another one. I'll, I'll, there's, there's probably a whole lot more around this, but just to give like people another little angle. And I know you asked about losing weight and this is a big one for lots of people and it's been one of my issues as well. So the reasons why we hold on to things are because that we don't feel safe, yeah? Um, that's one reason. Because it's serving us in some way, it's protecting us. So just test, Julie, it's safe for me to release weight? It's safe. Do you want me to do this? Mm, yeah. It's safe for me to lose weight. That's fine. Mm, yeah. So around the losing weight, always say release weight, because when we say lose weight, the unconscious mind thinks if we lose it, we have to find it again. Yeah. So, all, um, around releasing weight. Yeah. Yeah, so that was strong. Good. Okay, so safe for me to release weight on all four levels? Safe for me to release, no, nope. mm. didn't even have to get and, through that. Yeah, and so I've just got something that's actually coming in. Um, so can you just test, I'm in a famine? I'm sorry, test what? I'm in a famine. I'm in a famine. Shh. No? That fell apart. Okay. So test, um, I'm in a famine on the ancestral level. I'm on a famine in the, in, yeah, 
fell apart on the ancestor. That's a no. Okay. Sometimes, um, and again, this is down to individuals. Sometimes people will will test yes, and then if or no, and then if I say on a particular level, they'll test yes. Or sometimes we'll say on any level, and they'll test no, and then I say say uh, test it on some level, and they'll test yes. So the unconscious mind can be a bit slippery and want to hang on to stuff. It's like a protection thing. But okay, so they, those are good for you on that one. So test. Um, I know how to release weight. I know how to release, whoa, that just shh, fell apart. Yeah. I know how to release weight. And I'm sure you do, right? Yeah, on one level, I'm sure I do. <laughs> okay, well, tell us, how do, you, how do you release weight? Exercising and eating well. I love, I love mm -hmm. to make desserts. You know, I'm still recently married, and, and cooking and baking is how I show love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the thing, right? Because so here's the thing: for anybody who's got weight issues, it's not often. It's nothing to do with the weight, nothing to do with the food. Often, it's to do with lots of other things. Okay, because we might look at you know your connection with food, we might look at your um, relationship with rewarding yourself, or you know how you nurture yourself, or, or whether you're punishing yourself. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that goes on underneath the surface. But yeah, often people use food, and that was one for me as well. You know, me and my man, we kind of like we're a bit chalky. Chocoholics, <laughs> but when we got together, it was kind of like a little ritual thing, you know, and and then it becomes a habit. So um, we look at habits around eating, um, but you know, if it was as simple as what goes in your mouth and the amount of exercise, this whole calories in, calories out thing, that's really not the truth. Because if that was the case, you know, you would you wouldn't be asking me this question, right? So um, test my weight protects me. Oh, that's oh, uh, uh, my weight protects me. No, and I, and I know what that's that's actually from some childhood stuff, but obviously. Okay, but your muscle testing no. So t uh, test my weight protects my inner child. My weight protects my inner child. No. Um. So test my weight is serving me. My weight is serving me. Broken. So you're saying no, and we know obviously if it's an issue and it's not changing, then it's serving you on some level. So how does it serve you? It's about protection. It still is, but I believe in it's inner stuff, like stuff from maybe it's even past lives, but definitely from the mm -hmm. childhood or before. Okay. So can we ask? Because we could we could go really in depth on this, but let's just ask for um, a li little bit because we haven't got time to go kind of you know exploring into all of it. But so often what I will download is that you have all the insights and um, that you have. I say God or Creator, you can say the universe, whatever you like, that you have the highest definition and understanding on your relationship with food and on your relationship with your body. Yeah, would that be yeah. okay? Absolutely. Okay, and that you also that you understand why you've been holding on to this weight and how it served you. Because once we have that, it's kind of like a little key that then starts to unlock and and unravel. Okay, and um, as I said, we'd kind of dig deeper into this in a one-to-one -one session. But yeah, so let's just download that for you. For every, anybody else that has some weight issues, whether it's because um, it's not always that it's too much. It might be not enough weight, or it might be you've got some issues around food or your body. Let's just give everybody that they can have peace with their body. I tell you, what, I'm just getting a lovely download to, to give everyone. Would you like to know what it feels like to be able to love your body as it is right now, just as it, as it is? Yeah. Yes, one million percent. Yeah, because often that's like one of our biggest battles, right? Um, and and you know we think that we've got to fight it, and by fighting it somehow, you know, we're going to win at some point. But actually, to to win, what we need to do is we need to have peace with our bodies, and have peace with our food, and have peace with our relationship with our partners, and peace with our business, and peace with money. Yeah. So it's not about fighting it; it's about recognizing and being grateful for it, and seeing that problem as as a uh, message really you know gaining the wisdom so the more that we work in this way we actually get to you know for me it's kind of like digging for gold and we kind of find these beliefs and then we get wow so how what have you learned from having this weight what does the weight do for you 
usually people can reel off a whole load of things on a negative level, you know, but there's things on a positive level, you know, sometimes you have to dig a bit deeper to find them, but this is a question, this is how you can find these beliefs or how, find how it's serving you so you can begin to let go of those. And all you need to do is learn that lesson a different way or recognize that you've already got the lesson, okay, I've got it now, this is why. Thank you. Now I've got that lesson. I can move forward. I don't need to have this weight anymore. Yeah. Or now I've got that. I don't need to have all this clutter. Right. Mm -hmm. Wherever your clutter showing up. So yeah. Does that help? Absolutely. This has been completely eye opening. Do you have yeah. any? Have I any final thoughts on unconscious clutter? Well, you know, I think the most important thing is to recognize that we all have it. So don't kind of beat yourself up for it, but, you know, decide, commit, commit to clearing it, commit to taking some action. And, you know, really, often we look at things from, you know, everything's connected. Often we look at things from a behavioral point of view. So if we were talking about physical clutter, we'll say, well, you do a little bit of time and do this and do that. And this is how you can organize it, all of that. You know, we know how to do it and what we should do. That's not the thing. It's because somehow it's serving us. There's something going on on a deeper level, on an unconscious level. So once we get to the unconscious stuff, then it's easy to clear it. You know, um, you know, it, we, it will just ch automatically change. It's like, oh, no problem. It's gone. It's sorted because we don't have that energetic um, need. And um, again, on um, relationships. I want to give everybody everything, <laughs> but around relationships this is a really good one for everyone to know. Sometimes we are connected with, um, we take on the energy, the thoughts, the beliefs, and illnesses and pain and, and uh, diseases even of people around us. Okay, we do it particularly with partners, particularly with children and people close to us. And often, I've just been teaching a soulmate class, and what's really interesting is that we can still be connected with somebody that we were intimate with like 10 years ago. Yeah, so for people who are single or you know they've got some stuff going on in their relationships, have a look at that because you and you can muscle test if you're energetically connected to an ex-partner, and um, it's amazing. You can get divorced, but years later you're still not actually energetically divorced from them because whenever we make a, a promise or an agreement or a commitment or a contract, we have soul contracts. If we haven't cleared those, what happens is we're still engaged and hooked into all the drama. We're still sharing DNA because we've been intimate with people. We've changed changed DNA with them. So there's all kinds of stuff that goes on, and that can weigh us down. So that can also be around the weight stuff, you know. So it's on all sorts of levels. It's kind of quite intricate. It's not kind of a simple case, you know. Nothing is as simple as it seems, right? But it's it's really fascinating, and it's like down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, we could spend probably days on this. Do you have sure. any final final tips for people to release clutter in any area, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual? Whatever? Yeah, I mean, you know recognize it look look for it look at where you've got your problems and issues so recognize it if you've got a problem or an, an issue then it's clutter it's you know some form of clutter and you know look at what beliefs you might have to have in place to have that kind of problem you know we know if we want to be successful we want to have beliefs that you know that we are a success and that you know everything we do works and all those sort of things because you probably have said I don't know how many affirmations time and time again you know the affirmations often don't work because it's like you're trying to kid your unconscious mind whilst there's this conflicting belief in there anyway so what you want to do is to pull you know the the wrong belief if you like the belief that's not serving you so if you know what belief you ha could have that could work for you test whether you've got it. If you haven't got it, then that's the belief that you want to install. And if you know that's the belief that you could have, think what's the opposite of that? You know, like I'm rich or I'm poor. And test if you've got that belief, you know. That's, that's a good one. But, you know, definitely commit to looking at your unconscious beliefs and, and clearing them. You know, you can do that. Um, you can find out more about theta. You can find out more about the unconscious beliefs. You can learn how to muscle test, download some of the limiting beliefs on my website. You can do one-to-one -one session. Another area, I've got a, uh, a PDF on money clutter because I do a lot of work with people around money. Money clutter shows up as um, bills that haven't been paid, receipts and invoices and paperwork lying around, all that kind of things, you know, accounts not done all sorts of areas. Um, so you can physically start doing some of those things, but often, you know, you'll find some of these beliefs that are under, underpinning at, pinning at it. It's really worth looking at it on a deeper level, because otherwise what happens is you put a band-aid over it. So, you know, we've, we've probably all done something where we've cleared a certain area, 
talk about the physical clutter because we can see that, right? So we clear that bit and then a week later it's back again, you know, because we haven't actually changed the habit and the belief or whatever it is that's, that's going on. So, yeah. wow, this has been fantastic. I have lots to do, but it's all in a good way. <laughs> Again, it's just don't get discouraged. It's progress. It's about taking that first step. So, Kimberly, mm. tell us more about you, how people can find out, your website, all that good stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd love you to come and um, check out the website. It's www.kimberlylovell.com. You'll find lots of videos um, there on the blog, um, articles and so forth. So you can learn how to muscle test. You can download a list of beliefs and you can muscle test and check whether you've got them or not. You can book a one-to-one -one session, that's really good if you've got something going on, an area that you want to change, then um, I work on phone and Skype with people worldwide. That's fun. Um, but if you sign up for my newsletter on the um just drop me an email because each of the things are set up so you get different free gifts. So on, on the Kimberly Level com one I'm really about helping people live their dreams you know create a dream life dream business and and really clearing people's unconscious blocks because that's the biggest thing around everything really that's holding us back so drop me an email once you've signed up and ask me about the money clutter um, PDF and I'd be happy to send that to you and you know give you some tips on how you can clear that outstanding well I want to thank everyone for watching and listening go out clear some clutter to create the life you deserve desire and choose. Are you overwhelmed by clutter? Do you feel stuck in life? Are you ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Individual coaching and our unique clutter-free living mastermind support people in becoming free, moving forward, and achieving success. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of 10 Clutter-Free Living Tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's coaching, e-books, online monthly decluttering classes, how to organize your life, office hours, and her unique Clutter-Free Living Mastermind at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You can also watch all episodes on YouTube or download on iTunes and more. Join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.